Hello! In this video, we'll be talking about a very important part of my own personal PC, the motherboard. Now, my board has an X79 chipset, which along with the X58, is pretty well known for being great for budget builds. Uh, the only problem is that the boards themselves can be quite expensive. Now, many people resort to buying cheap, unbranded X79 motherboards from China, but you know, maybe with some patience and some searching, you can find one like mine at a reasonable price. The board I'm using is a DX79TO, and it was manufactured by Intel. Yeah, there was a time that Intel did make an effort to be a leading motherboard manufacturer. Now, I guess things just didn't work out for them, though. Uh, they began phasing the, out this part of their business in 2013. It took a few years, but Intel's no longer in the motherboard business unless you count NUX. Now, they did, however, make a few lesser-known X79 boards. Compared to others, they can often be had for much less money. There are some drawbacks to consider. My own personal motherboard I picked up from eBay. It had a price tag of $165, with shipping included. The seller had an option to make an offer, so I offered $145, and I left them a note. I informed them that I do have some experience building PCs and that they would have a hassle-free transaction, you know, so long as the board wasn't dead on arrival or anything like that. Sellers really appreciate this because items that require a bit of technical skill or knowledge have a high return rate. Returns are not only annoying for the sellers, they're also costly. So when you make an offer, you know, inform the seller that you know what you're doing, and it will definitely increase the chance that they'll accept the offer. This seller accepted mine. For whatever reason, eBay had also sent a $10 coupon code to my inbox. Now, I used this to lower the price a bit more to $135. Now, my motherboard came with an i7-3820 CPU, and this CPU isn't bad at all. It's just it's not the one that I had in mind. So I listed that and I sold it for $60. This lowered the overall total cost to $75. Now it may not be possible to find a deal like this every day, but when buying used hardware, it's usually a good strategy to look for listings that have other parts bundled in, make some offers, you know, give your sellers some assurance, and always check for promotions or coupons. Okay, so I've picked up an X79 motherboard for less money than the unbranded Chinese boards sell for. So what's the catch here? Well, for one, I had some luck with the price. Second, this board has some drawbacks. Let me explain. Most X79 boards eventually were updated to accommodate Ivy Bridge CPUs. Intel, though, was reluctant to even keep making motherboards and just elected to not even add that support. Yep, this board only supports Sandy Bridge E processors. You might be thinking, well, why not just get a custom BIOS that does support Ivy Bridge? No, you're, nobody seems to have much luck modifying and changing these Intel BIOSes. As far as I can tell, none of the Intel motherboards have custom BIOSes available. Now, maybe I haven't searched hard enough, uh, but they just do not seem to exist. And maybe. You know, if you're good at it, you know what you're doing, you can modify it yourself. But I've read that's pretty hard. I'm just saying, you know, if you do buy one of these boards, you will most likely be stuck with the Sandy Bridge E selection. And personally, I went with an i7-3960X. And there are other options uh, from this generation, though, like the 3930K, which is a pretty similar 6-core CPU. There's also some 8-core Xeons that aren't unlocked, but they are very cheap. So the CPU limitation of this board uh, definitely sucks, but there's still some okay options. Another drawback to the DX79TO is the lack of USB 3 headers. Now it does come with two USB 3s in the rear, and if those two are not enough, you can add a PCI expansion card to make a header. As Tech yes City says, PCI answers all your problems. That guy's great. 
You know, look him up on YouTube if you haven't heard of him. Also, the X79 chipset is like seven years old or something. So modern features like NVMe or even M.2 drives just aren't compatible. Now, there are ways to enable NVMe on other X79 boards, but this requires a BIOS modification. As I stated earlier, you won't find a modded BIOS for these Intel boards, so good luck with it. Now, my own personal board, the DX79TO, it was the cheap budget option of the Intel X79 lineup. There were two others. Okay, there was a DX79SI and the DX79SR. And I do suggest trying for one of those boards first. You can actually find deals occasionally on all three of the boards. Just don't pay too much for one. And with the CPU limitation in mind, it just isn't worth it. Now, personally, I wouldn't pay more than around $100. $50, which is still pricely, but it may be a better option than the unbranded Chinese board since you'll still have a lot of the things that made X79 so great. Quad channel works. You still have PCI 3.0 support, even with the Sandy Bridge E processors. You also get 40 PCI express lanes, and these boards do allow for overclocking. I'm currently running my i7-3960X at 4.6 GHz. Now this thing has a base clock of only 3.2. And by the way, I only gave $85 for the CPU. It retailed at like $1,000 seven years ago. And it's very comparable even today to something like the Ryzen 5 1600, 1600X, somewhere in there. So, in summary, I do recommend one of these old Intel boards, but only if you can get them cheap and you're okay with having a GIMP CPU selection. You'll also have to be willing to forego you know, NVMe or M.2 drives. There's still a lot of good things that make these old Intel boards worthwhile, and they're also pretty fun to build with, so long as you get it cheap. Now, I've given you some of my strategies on buying cheap, and honestly, uh, those strategies can be applied to anything. I recently picked up an RX 570 8GB graphics card for only $95, so I know my advice does work. And if you feel like uh, you've learned anything from this video, and you're inspired to try one of these Intel boards for yourself, please you know, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about what kind of configuration you decide to go for. And please remember to like and subscribe before exiting the video. Have a great day. Merry Christmas.